Okay. Okay. So hi everybody. I'm Miguel Morata. Uh, as Katja said before, I'm a PhD student from University of Valencia, and I will present my work in neural network emulation of synthetic hyperspectral Sentinel-2 imagery with with uncertainty. So first of all, uh, actually, imaging spectroscopy is growing very fast in many fields providing unprecedented information of the environmental conditions. However, these are technical challenge and only few satellites hyperspectral sensors are in operation. So as an alternative, uh, we can emulate, uh, emulate synthetic hyperspectral images using multispectral satellites like Sentinel-2 to obtain uh, synthetic a hyperspectral image uh, with, with multispectral uh, satellites. So on the preparation of, of new, on new satellites before the launch, the same generation with radiative transfer models are generally used to, to test the process date of the, of the data. But it generates sense from bioparameters based in physical models. The disadvantage of, of use uh, RTMs in, in that is, is, is that they are computationally, expen compu oh, sorry, computationally expensive and as a result, uh, it has a limitation of the complexity model and they have to simplify the physical relations between the variables, creating uh, some models that not always fit uh, accurately with, with the experimental data. So for this reason, emulation based in experimental data can sur survey this process as a fast alternative. So, but what is an emulator? Emulators are statistical models that imitate complex processes at a fraction of the computational cost. They are based in machine learning regression algorithms that can obtain nonlinear non -linear relationships between the input and, and the output. The difference between uh, regression and emulation is that regression use statistical models to obtain variables from spectra. And on the other side, uh, emulation use these variables as input and produce the corresponding spectra, same as an RTM, or, but, but a lower computational cost. So in our case, we can use uh, emulation to generate synthetic hyperspectral images. So uh, um, this study is based in some previous studies. Emulation has been used in, in many studies with good results, approximating physical models like RTMs. For instance, uh, in a previous study, uh, Verrells used Sentinel-2 images to retrieve some bioparameters. After that, they trained an emulator using the, the lookup table from an RTM with the mention uh, with the mentioned bioparameters. Once the emulator was trained, they applied the RTM based emulator to generate the corresponding synthetic hyperspectral images. Also, in another study, we used the emulation to surrogate spectral fitting method. This is a computational costly iterative method. Uh, this, uh, it, this method uh, retrieves solar induced fluorescence from a spectrum from defined spectral windows centered as at the absorption bands. So we use the experimental data, radiance, and solar induced fluorescence from high planned campaigns, and we need an accurate emulator to surrogate this process very fast, very times faster, keeping the same of, of the accuracy of spectral fitting method. In this, uh, with these premises in, in these two studies, our objective in this, in this new study is to emulate realistic synthetic hyperspectral images directly from multispectral images using Sentinel-2, for instance, and high plant image to train. In this case, we bypass the middle step uh, of uh, the rest of the study um, to generate the biophysical parameters. And so that we will take uh, advantage of the dimensional T reduction techniques applied to spectra hyperspectral signatures. So we will train directly from, from Sentinel 2, we'll obtain directly the, the, the hyperspectral image. So in the case of, of the materials uh, and, and the methods, for this study, we use it the, the FlexSense campaign 
in Julitz in west part of Germany. It consists in nine flight lines obtained by hyperspectral sensor high plant, mosaic it in one image. We split the, the image in two subsets, the red subset uh, as test here and the blue subset as uh, a strain subset. So we, we also obtained the, a Sentinel-2 image from more or less the same day and the same location. So we resample the two images at the same resolution, and we will use the Sentinel-2 spectra as input and high plant spectra uh, as output to train the, the emulator. So we use the, the reflectance image from both sensors. Sentinel-2 has a total of 13 spectral bands with, uh, with 10, uh, 20 and 60 meters spatial resolution and the three course resolution bands of 60 meters uh, has a half as a pur uh, pur purpose the correction of, of clouds and atmospheric effects so we will evaluate the, the effect in the emulator adding or exclu excluding these, these atmospheric bands uh, in in other side the high plant sensor has a total of two modules Fluo and dual. Fluo module adheres data in the red and near infrared range for the retrievals of sol solar induced fluorescence. However, we will use dual module that provides contiguous spectral information with a spectral resolution of 3 to 10 nanometers in the visible and near infrared at, uh, uh, and near infrared and 10, 10 nanometers in the short wave inf infrared spectral range forming an image with a total of 511 bands. Both images have a similar range, more or less, from around 400 to around 2,000 nanometers. So we can compare, compare the, the spectra. So um, in the case of methods, we tested kernel-based methods like kernel reach regression uh, and the Gaussian process regression. We also tested three basic algorithms like extreme gradient boosting, and we also tested uh, neural networks and deep learning neural networks. To reduce the spectral dimensionality, we use a dimensionality reduction technique of principal component analysis. And this is very useful because in hyperspectral signatures, many bands are highly correlated between their. And we can take advantage of this spectral redundancy to lower the, the, the output uh, dimensionality. So we, we can also uh, talk about some algorithms provide uncertainty estimation as GPR. GPR is one of the most used. However, it is computational costly when it's training with large data sets. So as an alternative, in this study, we use it Neural Network Dropout Technique de developed by Jan Ingal as an approximation of, of Bayesian inference. It consists to train a neural network and once trained it, turn off randomly some of the neurons. This is repeated a total of 100 times, obtaining 100 subarchitectures from the original training neural network. Uh, each architecture provides a different nonlinear function similar of, as the infinite nonlinear functions of, of GPR. So with the mean and the standard deviation of the outputs, we can obtain a, a, a measure and, and uncertainty of the predicted va values. This, is, this can be applied not only to to neural network with one layer, but also with a deep learning with many, many layers also. So to, we, we also tested uh, deep, deep neural networks uh, in, in our study. So but to test deep neural networks, uh, we take the use of the deep learning toolbox uh, in Artmo. So I will explain a bit uh, how, how the, this toolbox works in, in, in Artmo because you, you all, all of you, you can, we can take use of, of that. Um, first of all, uh, you, you, if you uh, have used the Artmo before, you know that we have 
two, two tools, uh, the regression retrieval tool and the emulator tool. So this is implemented in, in, both, in both cases. And in a, a, you can see my, my, my mouse, yes, or, or not. Yes, we can see it. We good. Okay, okay, perfect. So when when you when you open Armo and you go to the to the choose of the of the machine learning regression algorithms, you can choose a neural network. Here, if you put uh, advanced options, you open the the next uh, window, and here you can change the typical parameters of the neural network, but also you can uh, put deep network. Uh, open the deep network designer that is this uh, big big window here uh, th this is a toolbox uh, from from matlab but we we adapted the 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 variables to to be compatible for with, with Atmo. so you can create your own neural network you can add many layers uh, change the activation layers you can uh, do a lot of things uh, in in this in this tool, so you can create a neural networks as complex as you you want. So you can create it and only have to export it. And when you when once you save it the the mat file, you can also load the predefined neural yes. network or or the predefined neural network. Uh, this is a user-friendly toolbox with drag and drop interface. It's very useful. Uh, it, it's very easy. Uh, you only have to to drag and and create your your neural networks. And uh, you have the options to export the famous neural networks like Google uh, Google Net Network or AlexNet Networks. And you can uh, change some some layers maybe to, to, to obtain a, a regression neural network. Yeah, because I, I have to say that it's important to say that uh, here at the moment, we only, only take use of the machine learning regression alg algorithm as regression algorithm. So if you create a neural network, it's important that the first layer has to be a sequence layer and the output layer has to be a, a regression output layer only because we are using the, this neural network as a, a regression neural network. And also here in the in the windows, advanced options, you can check the, the dropout uncertainty to obtain the not only the value, but also the, the uncertainty uh, as in GPR. So also uh, we, we added uh, the transfer learning button is the same as load presented uh, neural network, but you can save uh, your training, you, you can train your neural network, save it, and later uh, retrain another time, not the, by the beginning, but uh, the training point as, as before you, you train it. So uh, you can take use of the, of the transfer learning also in, in, in Artmo. So uh, after that, uh, the workflow that we follow uh, in, in this study was uh, as follows. First, we created a data set with corresponding spectra from the same pixels in Sentinel-2 and High Plan, and selecting random uh, this is selecting random pixels from, from both images. After that, we applied a principal component analysis to the High Plan spectra reducing the dimensionality to 100 principal components. And we train the emulator using Sentinel-2 spectra as input and the principal components as output. Finally, once training the emulator, we apply it to the Sentinel-2 spectra and update the corresponding 100 principal components. We apply the, an inversion of principal component analysis and as a result, we have the synthetic Sentinel-2 hyperspectral signatures. The advantage of emulation is that it's trained with real spectra. So it can obtain the most consistent output hyperspectral patterns with the, with the input spectra. So uh, as a result, we trained the emulator with five cathode 
cross validation and 100 principal components as output. We obtain the, the resampling image to 20 meter resolution and exclude atmospheric bands, obtaining the, the best results. And after that, we evaluated the machine learning regression algorithms, varying the number of training samples. We can see that the uh, XTV was the worst algorithm. Secondly, the kernel methods performed well with few samples, but their computational cost grows exponentially with the number of, of, of samples until some points where the computer uh, can process the data. Meanwhile, the neural networks keep performing fast and accurately with increasing the, the number of, of, of samples. For this reason, we, we will choose uh, neural networks. Also, uh, we also compare the, the neural network. Yeah, I, I have to say that the neural network that we tested is a neural network with only one layer. But we also tested uh, uh, the neural network with different number of layers. Uh, we created different structures in the, in the deep learning uh, toolbox. And uh, we tested the, the different number of, of layers in, in, the, in the neural networks. We tested uh, one layer, two layers, three, five, 10, and, and 20. So in the graph, we can see that neural network structure with, with one layer obtained the, the better results. This can be explained as deep learning can be useful for complex processes, but in case of our study, one layer is enough to overcome the complexity of the relationships between the multispectral and the hyperspectral sensor. So also with low number of samples, deeper networks uh, are overfitted due to the little quantity of samples and they have a lot of uh, parameters that they have to adjust. And as we increase the number of, of samples, the deeper ne neural networks become more and more accurately. But in, in this case, in our study, a neural network with one layer was, was enough to, to process the, the, the better results. So afterwards, uh, we evaluated the model with the test subset that we mentioned before. We obtained values of R square between 0 0.7 and 0 0.9 for full spectral range and a normalized root mean square error below 5% also for full spectral range. We also compared the molecular spectra with high plant spectra. And to do that, we obtained the, the mean spectrum and the standard deviation for all the, all the test pixels. And as we can see, a molecular spectra overlaps perfectly the, the high plant spectra. And finally, we also obtained the relative error and plotted it as a box plot graph. We can see that quartile one and quartile three uh, are both between minus five and plus five percent. So, in summary, the model obtained very good statistics, and now we can apply it to a full Sentinel two image. So, we applied the emulator to a complete Sentinel two tile example to 20 meters of ground sample distance. Our computer took only seven minutes to generate the full synthetic hyperspectral image. This is a processing speed of 0 0.14 seconds per 10,000 pixels. This is incredibly fast. And the final product was a Sentinel-2 like hyperspectral image of 60 gigabytes. This is uh, very big. Uh, and spreading the emulated pixels, we can see that vegetation and basal spectra are very realistic with 500 bands obtained by, by, by Sentinel-2. Yeah, but, but obtained by only, only 10 bands from Sentinel-2. Also, uh, as we mentioned before, we obtained the, the uncertainty maps using the dropout technique. And using a principal component analysis technique at output and error propagation, we also obtain multi output maps with their corresponding uncertainty. So finally, we obtain one uncertainty map for each of the 511 bands. Yeah, a total of 511 uncertainty maps. Uh, so we can see that the spatial uncertainty is very heterogeneous. This is because uh, land covers less represented in the training database will obtain higher uncertainty values. For instance, these crops, or for instance, the, the, the clouds. 
that the, uh, of course we, we didn't train it with, with close and we obtained it higher higher uncertainty in in the in these land covers so in conclusions we can highlight three points well four points first emulation can reconstruct spectral signatures of high spectral resolution imagery from lower resolution data Secondly, with this tool, we have a powerful and really well fast generation of a huge hyperspectral reflectance image covering a, a large area. And emulators can serve a synthetic test data in the preparation of future imaging spectroscopy missions as flex, time, or HTV. And finally, with dropout technique, we can obtain also multi output uncertainties using neural networks faster than other algorithms like uh, GPR, for instance. So thank you very much for your attention. And if anyone has a question or a comment, I'm glad to answer it. Thank you very much.